Sharks are already some of the most bizarre and fascinating creatures in the ocean, but what happens when nature decides to throw in a curveball? Mutations in the animal kingdom are part and parcel of the natural world, and sharks are no exception. But recently there's been some suggestion that mutations within sharks are actually on the increase, and if that is the case, the question we've got to get to the bottom of is why. So join me today as we take a look at some of the strangest real shark mutations. Yep, the real ones, not the AI slot ones that you'll find in most other videos. From two-headed terrors, cyclops, sharks, and albino anomalies, Strap yourselves in, you're in for a pretty weird one today. <laughs> Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Just really, really quickly before we start, I want to hit you guys with my annual request, which is if you're enjoying Shark Bites, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It turns out the majority of you guys watching Shark Bites aren't actually subscribed to the channel. It's something like 80%, which is wild. <laughs> so if you've been enjoying the channel or you feel like you've learned something new or you simply just like the videos that I make, please do hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. Now, at first, we're going to start off with one of the most recent mutated sharks and I imagine quite a lot of you out there will have at the very least read about or seen a picture of this shark. Yep, it's the nurse shark that looked like it had just been dunked into a big old bag of Cheetos. Honestly, when this crossed my desk, I was like, this cannot be real. Surely it can't be real. The ease at which you could Photoshop something like that these days within about five seconds just makes you question everything. But it turns out this is 100% real and they've even got a scientific research paper to back it up. Just to quickly give you a bit of a comparison, if some of you out there are wondering what nurse sharks are normally meant to look like, it's this, a pretty standard brown slash gray coloration. So this bright orange one is way off. So about a year ago back in August 2024, a group of sports fishermen fishing in Tortuguera National Park in Costa Rica pulled up a two meter nurse shark that was bright orange. After consulting with marine scientists, it was concluded that the adult nurse shark in question had a very rare condition called albino xanthochromism. That double whammy mutation right there is obviously exceptionally rare with only one other confirmed similar case in another elasma brand. In that case, a homelin ray from the Irish Sea was thought to have a very similar condition which you can see here compared to a typical member of its own species, although it's clearly nowhere near as extreme as this nurse shark. Albino xanthism usually presents itself as an overabundance of yellow pigmentation and then a lack of other pigments in the skin. That's the xanthism part and then the albino part here is because this shark has white eyes with no visible black iris. I think the craziest part about this though is that at two meter long this is absolutely an adult nurse shark. So this individual who would have been bright orange orange as a youngster has somehow managed to survive to adulthood, which in a habitat where anything bigger than you is probably trying to eat you is pretty good going. <laughs> How this orange nurse shark has managed to not get eaten by another larger fish is just bonkers. The thing would have stuck out like a sore thumb. The interesting thing about this though is that despite there being no other cases of albino xanthism, there are other accounts of mutated nurse sharks. Back in 2023, a couple of my scientific co-authors, Ollie Shipley and Austin Gallagher, came across a nurse shark with a condition known as pie Bulbism. The female nurse shark, measuring around one and a half to two meters long, has the genetic condition that Dalmatians have, where large, unpigmented or white patches of skin appear against a normally dark pigmented background. This particular female nurse shark is actually seen quite a lot around the islands of Utila and Roatan, just off the coast of Honduras, which is great to see that her mutation actually hasn't really harmed her in any way. Now, piebaldism isn't as rare as albino xanthism in sharks, and it's actually been documented at least 25 times in wild sharks, impacting 17 different species, all the way from tiger sharks to horn sharks. Some sharks will have their entire bodies displaying the condition, whereas others might only show it on their pectoral fins or around their gills. Now you might be wondering whether those white unpigmented patches of skin can take over the entire body completely covering it. And yes, they absolutely can, and that skin condition is called leucism, and it's been documented in lots of different shark species. A three foot long leucistic taupe shark was caught here in England back in 2020 by Jason Gillespie, just off the Isle of Wight. And then a black tip shark was found in Florida with the same condition, as well as an Australian washed up white shark pup who took its namesake far too seriously. One thing you'll notice across those three examples that I've just given to you there is that all of them still have their black eyes. And that's because leucism doesn't really tend to impact the eyes. It only focuses on the pigmentation in the skin. Lots of media outlets will regularly report leucistic sharks as albino sharks, but the two conditions, while looking pretty similar, are actually quite different. The main difference though between the two of them is in those eyes. True albino animals will almost always have red or pinkish purple eyes, like you can see here in these rabbits, which are probably one of the most common albino animals out there. To be you can also get albino animals that have a bit of a goldish tint to their eyes as well. Albinism then, or albinism, however you want to pronounce it, is a genetic condition that prevents all cells in the body from producing melanin, including the eyes. And so because there's no pigment within those eyes, the blood vessels within the whites of the eyes show through, giving them that pinky red color. And then when they occasionally appear as gold, those albino individuals still don't have any melanin in their eyes, but they do have other pigments. Specifically, the gold color comes from the chrysopsin pigment. And what you're seeing on screen now is a swell shark with those 
is very pigment in its eyes. So it's still got that white coloration on its body and you can see all those blood vessels coming through. But looking at the close up of its eyes, you can definitely see those gold flecks. Back in 2008, there were lots of reports of an apparent albino whale shark spotted and photographed by Antonio Moreno in the Galapagos Islands. The 10 meter long female whale shark looks kind of ghostly in these pictures, but for a whale shark to survive to adulthood with that condition is impressive. But despite it being reported as an albino whale shark, without seeing a picture of its eyes, there's no way for us to confirm whether that's albinism or leucism. On balance, I'd say it was probably more likely to be a leucistic individual purely based on the number of examples we have of that genetic mutation in sharks, but you can't be 100% sure. That particular female hasn't been seen again since 2008, and considering the amount of divers who'd be diving Darwin's Arch every year, you'd have thought that someone might have seen her. Now, I couldn't round off this skin mutation part of the video without talking to you guys about Inspector Clouseau, the bright pink manta ray. Named after the pink panther, this male reef manta ray who lives off Lady Elliot Island in Australia has erythrism, a genetic mutation causing an increase in red pigments of the skin. Initially, it was speculated that he might have had some kind of skin infection, but after a biopsy was taken in 2016, it was confirmed to be genetic. Inspector Clouseau has only been seen about 10 times since he was first sighted in 2016, although his most recent sighting was last month, so it's good to know he's still mooching around Lady Elliot Island. So we've covered just about all of the genetic skin mutations in sharks there, but how about we move on to some of the slightly weirder ones? One of which, again, presented with one of those skin mutations that we've just spoken about. Back in 2011, a fisherman caught a pregnant female dusky shark off the Pacific coast of Mexico, and after cutting open the female, he pulled out a number of unborn dusky shark pups, eight of which looked like this, and the ninth looked like this. <laughs> Initially, after it was posted to the internet, the vast majority of people who saw it considered it to be a hoax. But when the fisherman brought the specimen to scientists working for National Geographic, it was confirmed to be real. After some scientific analysis, the dusky shark embryo was confirmed to have developed with the cyclopia mutation, otherwise known as cyclops eye. The cyclops shark measuring in at just 56 centimeters hadn't been born before the mother was fished, although offspring with this mutation are normally stillborn or will die just after they're born. The fatal mutation is caused when the embryonic forebrain fails to divide properly, resulting in a a single eye, but alongside that singular eye, the organism usually fails to survive because of other developmental problems with its internal organs, particularly a failure to develop a working respiratory system. There have been a few cyclops shark specimens reported in the scientific literature in the past, but none were found outside the womb of an adult shark, showing you that it's pretty much a fatal mutation. Now, sometimes sharks have mutations where they end up with one organ when they were supposed to have two, like those cyclops sharks, but on other occasions, they end up with two things when they were really only supposed to have one. Yep, this isn't some shark B movie, we're moving on to two-headed sharks. This congenital mutation, more scientifically known as bicephaly, usually occurs when an embryo starts to split into two identical twins, but fails to separate completely, resulting in two heads sharing a single body. Within sharks, it's been documented a number of times, particularly in blue sharks who have occasionally been found with two-headed embryos within their wombs. This one here was found off the coast of Mexico in 2004, and then this one here was seen off Australia in 2008. Again, this condition usually means the offspring can't survive life outside the womb, so it's highly unlikely you're gonna find any adult sharks with two heads. As to why it crops up quite a lot in blue sharks, it's thought that because female blues tend to have relatively large litter sizes, sometimes over 100, there's a greater chance you'll get abnormalities within that litter. Although it's not just blue sharks, a two-headed bull shark was found in the Gulf of Mexico in 2011, so it has been identified in other shark species over the years. So although lots of these shark mutations have been found all around the world, there does seem to be a little bit of a cluster. Just looking at it anecdotally, lots of the examples that we've spoken about today seem to be being found around the Pacific and Atlantic coasts of Mexico, Central America, like Honduras, Costa Rica. And although I'm not presenting you with scientific statistics on this, I did find it anecdotally quite interesting. As to exactly why these mutations happen though, we're still not entirely sure. Scientists have mentioned a reduction in the gene pool, which leads to more inbreeding as a potential factor. So you could say that maybe overfishing is playing a role, but others have also mentioned temperature effects as well. So an increase in sea temperature causes an increased metabolic rate, which can lead to more error in DNA replication, aka more mutations. I think that temperature one is a really interesting one there because lots of these mutation examples are cropping up in equatorial countries or in tropical waters, particularly those ones that seem to be clustering around here. The Mesoamerican Barrier Reef, the Gulf of Mexico, and the surrounding waters have seen some of the highest average increases in sea temperature since the 1980s and are regularly impacted by monstrous marine heat waves. And I reckon the same could
could probably be said for the Pacific coast of the Americas as well. So I do wonder whether these temperature increases might be playing a role in a lot of these mutations. And I suppose with those temperatures set to increase, we could potentially see the numbers of shark mutations increasing as well. Now, if mutations and genetics is your kind of thing, you must have heard about the hybrid white shark found in the Bermuda Triangle. What, you haven't? Well, luckily for you guys, I tell you all about it in this video here. Spoiler alert, it doesn't look anything like that nonsense AI image you can see, but the story around it is pretty wild, so make sure you give it a click. 